it's not very warm. Um, it warms you from the inside out because it's just beautiful out here. Isn't it? Oh my gosh, it may still be kind of cold out there, but boy, if people are treating it like it's 70 degrees and boy, everyone was getting out enjoying the sunshine today after a freezing and snowy February. The change in this weather, boy, it has folks smiling, including me. Let's take a look out of the coast. Look at the parking lot at Pelican Brew Pub in Pacific City. People loving this sun as it's almost going to set over there on the coast. Just a gorgeous time to be over at the beach surfing with your friends. If you have a thick enough wetsuit, I hope. Meteorologist Joe Ranieri joins us now. And Joe, this sunshine gonna stick around for a little bit. It will, it'll stick around until the early part of next week. I wanna take it back to the Oregon coast, Nina. This is over in Astoria. Temperatures earlier today up and down the Oregon coastline were anywhere in the mid to the upper 50s. We're looking at a reading of 50 degrees under clear skies in Astoria at this hour. Now as we go into the Rose City, we're looking at temperatures right around 42 degrees. We saw highs throughout much of the metro area and the mid to the upper 50s. A few locations got close to 50 degrees. Now where it hasn't really improved a whole lot is over in the Dalles. That snow is going to be sticking around for a little bit, but no new snow here the next couple of days over in the east end of the Dalles. You're looking at a temperature this hour of 28 degrees. And looking at some other locations, you'll notice the more east you get of the city, you'll be seeing temperatures really dropping. Happy Valley, a temperature of 33 degrees degrees at this hour and throughout much of the west side anywhere in the low to the mid 40s and down in Florence you're looking at a temperature of 53 degrees. So we are going to be seeing sunshine heading into tomorrow but windy conditions as well. Gusts will start to move through later on tonight and into tomorrow as well. The other thing I'm paying close attention to Nina. Unfortunately, I know we're heading into the early part of March, but there's a chance we can be seeing more snow by the middle part of next week. I'll have more details on that. But in the meantime, let's just enjoy all that sunshine. Yeah, I'm going to forget that you just <laughs> I figured word. you would. <laughs> I am mad at you right now. All right, Joe, thank you so much. So a lot of folks decided they would take advantage of the sunny, dry weather and spend some time outside. It looks gorgeous right now. Let's go to KGW's Art Edwards live in downtown Portland. And Art, oh my gosh, such a nice day. Well, it really is. You know, the sun has been out and shining all day long. Maybe not quite as warm as some people would like it, but I tell you what, a lot of people decided they were going to get outside and enjoy it. It has a really feeling good about today. We were able to get out and caught up with some people who were taking advantage of all the sunshine today. Many of them right along the waterfront, just soaking in that vitamin D. Uh, they have been waiting for this and they look forward to many more days like this. It's beautiful when it's sunny. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm absolutely loving the weather right now. It's a nice day to be outside. I'm, I'm loving the weather. I finally feel happy after a dark, dark winter. It's uh, deceiving. It's uh, sunny outside, but really cold. Yeah, I would agree with that day, that guy. You know what, it was also a perfect afternoon for getting out and doing a little bit of fishing. You could do that at the Cabela's in Tualatin. Some kids got the chance to cast with police officers from several local agencies today. Great day to do that. They were trying to hook some of the 200 trout that were stocked in a makeshift pond. Those trout got all the way up to three pounds. Anything to get kids outside rather than in front of an Xbox, I'm for. <laughs> and I got a great fishing partner. We're seeing a lot of lot of smiles and a lot of excitement and yeah, it's just good good fun for the, the kids out here. Yeah, definitely a great day for that. Now, in addition to experiencing some of the fishing, the kids got some tips on uh, boating safety and water safety. That's probably something they'll be able to use, oh, maybe a month or two down the road when it warms up and a little, uh, warms up a little bit. But you know what? All in all, a great day here in the Portland area. It's wonderful to see the sun shining once again. Nina, back to you. Yeah, Art, I was trying to get my daughter to get used to the feeling of sunglasses on her little <laughs> face yesterday. Hopefully summer is around the corner. Thank you. We can stay up to date on the forecast and weather warnings by downloading our KGW Portland weather app. It is free for all Apple or Android devices. Okay, here's kind of a weather story, but it's also about Taco Bell hot sauce packets. That is what a Sun River man says got him through five days stranded in the snow. This is obviously an old picture of 36 year old Jeremy Taylor because he got stuck in the snow on a Forest Service road outside Sun River last Sunday. He tried to walk out the next day, but the snow was way too deep. So he and his dog were finally found, though, by a snowmobiler just yesterday. Taylor says he got through by periodically turning on his truck to keep warm and having an occasional snack of taco sauce. Yeah, important to keep in your truck. 
Okay, we now know the names of those two Vancouver police officers involved in a deadly shooting earlier this week. They have been identified as Officer Christopher Duville, a six year veteran of the force, and Andrew Dunbar, who joined Vancouver police in 2017. They were both called to West 12th and Jefferson on Thursday on reports of a man standing in the road, waving guns and pointing them at people. 29 year old Michael Pierce was killed by those officers. The Colombian reports Pierce had been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Both officers are on leave while the shooting is investigated. A Portland man is facing DUI charges after a fiery crash along 205 early this morning. Oregon State Police say Jordan Brown was speeding down the highway when he crashed into a Jeep Wrangler driven by Miguel Cortez. One of the cars burst into flames after impact. Both Brown and Cortez were both injured. Troopers say while interviewing Brown, he seemed impaired and a later test at the hospital showed his blood alcohol level was more than twice the legal limit. He is now facing charges of DUI and reckless driving. Dozens of people rallied at the Clark County Courthouse today in support of a man accused of driving his truck into a group of protesters. Billy Wilson is facing two charges after that incident, which happened back in September 2017. Wilson was stopped and detained by police after accelerating twice past a group of counter protesters. The Colombian reports he was later charged with reckless endangerment and reckless driving. Wilson's supporters say the charges against him are politically motivated. We've all heard of porch pirates, but a woman in Hillsborough says a guy took a part and drove off with their basketball hoop. Megan McCann shared this surveillance video showing the man starting to take it apart and you can see the hoop laying on its side while he goes and gets some tools. Well, she says he spent a half hour taking this thing apart and putting it into his van. McCann says she almost thinks he may have just had the wrong house, but police are investigating. Hmm. President Donald Trump today told an audience of conservatives he will win re-election in 2020 by a much bigger margin than he did in 2016. While speaking at the Conservative Political Action Conference, he rehashed how he won as an outsider in 2016 and said he's looking forward to the next election. The president also took aim at the Democrats' Green New Deal, which has been proposed by some Dems in Congress. No planes. No energy. When the wind stops blowing, that's the end of your electric. Let's hurry up. <laughs> darling, darling, is the wind blowing today? I'd like to watch television, darling. So the Democrats' Green New Deal plan does call for a drastic drop in greenhouse gas emissions from fossil fuels like oil, coal, and natural gas, but it does not ground airplanes or rely only on renewable energy. And as far as the Russia investigation goes into President Trump's relationship with them, Oregon Senator Ron Wyden is heavily involved in it. He stopped by KGW just within the last hour to give us an update. Wyden is on the Senate Intelligence Committee and says after the Michael Cohen's hearings this past week, they're following the money. He says if Cohen's testimony that Trump committed tax and insurance fraud in business dealings is true, it could be linked to the hacking of the Democratic Party during the election. Wyden is also trying to get answers on Saudi nationals who are charged in serious crimes in the U.S. that are mysteriously whisked back to Saudi Arabia before their trial starts. There are rape and manslaughter cases here in Oregon where the person charged was flown back to the Middle East and there's no way to extradite them back here to face the charges. The first thing that needs to be done is for the Trump administration to bring the Saudi ambassador in and to ask the Saudi ambassador what the Saudi government is going to do to ensure that those individuals who, who have clearly uh, escaped are brought back to Oregon to face justice. That doesn't take any law, doesn't take any new regulations, that takes leadership from the Trump administration. So Wyden says, stay tuned. This is a big issue he's working on.